Hey everybody, it's Professor Parrish. Uh, I hope you all are doing okay. And um, what I want to do this week is to go over uh, week 12 for English 109. We have slowly but surely entered the final segment of our class with a starting narration, our last two papers. We really have about a month and two weeks left of class, which is crazy, right? So I want to go over a few things. Um, obviously, if you've not watched, I'm going to take my glasses off so you all don't have it reflected the entire time. Um, if you have not uh, been watching the lecture videos, please make sure that you do. Make sure that you tell your friends to watch them, especially given what we're going to be going over these last couple of weeks. Um, if you've been having any difficulty with any of the material, please feel free to reach out and um, touch base with me. Um, we did just complete weeks 10 and 11 together. And some of you did both weeks great. Some of you did everything in week 10, maybe didn't do everything in week 11, and some people maybe left assignments out of each. At this point in the class, um, you shouldn't be freaking out because you still have a month and a few weeks to catch up on assignments. But what you should be doing is going to the grade book in our class, seeing what your grade is, and try to calculate you know, the points remaining in the class, what should my grade be, what am I thinking my grade will be. Um, in order to move from this class to English 121, you have to have a C or higher in this class. And this class is out of 1,100 points altogether. So you can kind of deduct how many points we've had so far in the class from 1,100, and then whatever points you have, add that on to that number. And that should give you an idea of what your overall total can be. Um, the last day to withdraw from the class is April 27th, so we still have about a month left, which is plenty of time to make up your grade. My point is, at this juncture in the class, you should be making sure that you do every assignment on time and turned in. And I know that these last couple of weeks have been very difficult with everything going on around us, with work, with family, with social distancing. It's a big responsibility, and it's a lot to take in right now because all of us, I'm sure, are under stress and have anxiety. But um, I do want to say that you don't give up on this class if you're struggling. Keep at it. Don't give up yet. If you have questions, let me know. But do your best to stay on top of things. The last couple weeks being thrown together, I'm sure, threw a lot of people off. But luckily, everything should be back on track from here on in. So let's talk about week 12. And I'm going to minimize myself here. And we're going to review what's happening this week in the assignments. So um, having finished week 10 and 11, we're going to go down here to week 12. All right. So week 12, um, the only reading in our textbook is to look at chapter 19, which is on narration uh, in on pages 369 to 385. So examining chapter 19. Um, that's the only chapter to read this week, and then we have three assignments. So we have the discussion forum for week 12, which I'll go over shortly. We have a grammar review, and then we have the writing prep for narration. Now, I did not go over narration in week 11 because I think of all the papers we do, narration requires the least amount of explanation. Surely at some point in your high school career, you have written a narrative paper which is just a paper about an experience that's happened to you or a friend. Or it could even be something that's happened in your community. So let's just dive right into the writing prep and talk about it. Uh, this will be due Sunday. And I know my little uh, screen is gonna give me a lot of little boxes popping up, so I apologize. Yes, there we go. All right, so narration. Um, pretty much straightforward. It's just writing about an event that has happened to you, a family member, a friend, or in your community. I've had narrative, narrative papers written about broken bones. I've had narratives written about um, the May 8th tornado, about your experience um, during 9-11. I had a student that joined the military right after 9-11, and so they wrote about that. I've had students write about sports teams and winning games and losing tournaments and about senior year in high school, or about a vacation that they went on, or a trip that changed their life. There's lots of things you can write about, and I think narrative is one of the easier papers for us to write about as people, because 
we all the time are telling stories. We tell our friends stories. We tell our family stories. So narrative seems like it comes naturally to us because it's just us putting onto paper a story that we tell. Um, probably one of my favorite narratives I've ever had a student write was a girl wrote about breaking her leg. Um, she wrote about being on her dirt bike out in the middle of the woods. She jumped and lost control and the the tension of the story was that her phone was like thrown away from her and so with a broken leg she had to like crawl to get her phone and it was all these emotions and thoughts and the way that she wrote it out was really powerful and it's always stuck with me because of just how well it was written and the tension that she built in that story so but I've also read stories about students writing about their team winning a game or going on like getting their first horse and going riding horseback riding and just something that didn't have a lot of stakes or tension but was just things they wanted to talk about so you're pretty much free to choose whatever topic you want for this paper um, for the writing prep all I want to know is what is your topic and then what is the structure what's the organization um, and you can be pretty loose with this because narratives are your own stories. I don't want you to spoil the story if there's a special surprise. Um, don't spoil it, but just kind of give me a, a vague skeletal framework of what you're going to talk about. All right. So that's that. And then the grammar review is a, uh, let me put on here. The grammar review, we're going to go over number seven here. And when it decides to pop up here in a second. Um, everybody's been doing really well on the grammar assignments so far. And I know I say that every week. But, I mean, overall, you all have done very well on the grammar reviews. And so I don't feel like there's anything we necessarily need to go over again in terms of that. Um, one thing I will say is um, make sure to read all of the directions. I think that's probably the only part that gets some students tripped up is maybe they don't realize... Um, that there's an extra part of the assignment to do. So just make sure you look at that before turning it in. But here we go. So the grammar review, number seven. We have ten altogether, so we're, we're getting closer to the end. <laughs> um, is on page 498. Um, you're just writing down the correct adjective or adverb needed for one through five in part one. So does it need an adjective describing a noun or does it need an adverb describing a verb? And we've done adjectives and adverbs before in the class, so I feel like this is just combining those two aspects together. Um, on page 498 for activity number three, um, you're writing down whether or not it is good or well. And this part trips up a lot of people because I am guilty of this as well. <laughs> um, I think because if you're from the Southern Illinois region, um, sometimes our diction gets a little bit skewed. So definitely look in your textbook to see the terms for which we use well and the terms for which we use good in our examples. Um, I always think of 30 Rock, Tracy Morgan, he's a character on that show, and, and they're like, oh, you doing good? And he's like, Su he's like Superman does good, you do well. <laughs> I, always, I love that joke. It's one of my favorites of that show. And then the last part is on page 499, you're just choosing the correct word or phrase for sentences 1 through 10. Um, you are getting graded on numbers 1 through 5. Numbers 6 through 10 are extra credit. So another extra credit opportunity. Definitely take advantage of this. Um, there won't be too many of those left. So definitely um, take advantage of that in the class. And then the final thing for the week is looking at the discussion forum for week 10. If I scroll down here, uh, the week 10 discussion forum, not week 10, week 12, what am I doing? The week 12 discussion forum, sorry guys. Um, week 12 on here is talking about library resources. So we are getting closer, after we do narration, we're going to be doing an argument paper. And so we are getting closer to talking more and more about using sources. Now luckily for you all, with narrative, we aren't going to have to use too many sources because a narrative paper it's from your perspective so you really don't have to cite anything but what I want us to do this week is to practice um, using some online sources so looking at the directions here number one I would like you to go to SIU's pay, SIC's page sorry, um, and click on the library resources at the top what seems helpful about this page and what seems confusing so if you want to know where to find that this is our page 
I hate that it does that. And you'll see up here at the top there's a link that says library resources. So you're going to click on that. And I want to know what about this seems helpful and what seems confusing. So I want your answer for question number one based on that. Number two says, after reading chapter 19, how prepared do you think you are to do research for an essay? If you've done research for an essay before, explain that experience. So I want to know, have you done a research paper before? What's your experience with that? I just want to kind of gauge where we as a class are in terms of writing a research paper. And then here's the, the kicker. Number three is go to the library resources, click the find online articles link. So here you can say uh, find online articles, which we find here. Resources. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. You could do the journal search if you want. All right. So it is going to ask you. Um, choose a database and locate an article. If you're off campus, you'll need to put input your SIC ID and last four of your social to access it. Um, after you found the article, include a link and explain why you chose it. So you'll need to know your SIC ID number and the last four of your social. If you don't know these or if you have trouble finding this information, then what I would suggest you do is then you can go to us. I would like you to try to use the library resources first because this is something you will end up using in other classes. So I want you to familiarize yourself with it. However, if you're having trouble logging in or the information isn't working properly, then what I want you to do then. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do is let me search up um, Van Gogh. Okay. So you can see that I'm doing like a Van Gogh search. I want to find an article about Van Gogh um, controversy. Not having a very good day with this. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't want to pick something that's just like a Wikipedia article. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go up here to settings or to where it says more. I'm going to go under settings, tools. Okay, when you click on tools, you'll see two drop downs came up. Um, I want to do within the past year. And here we go. All right, so I'm going to avoid some dot coms. I don't want dot coms. Instead, I'm going to look for something that's like a dot edu, like an education site. So um, Berkeley's university has this cool article about what really happened with Van Gogh's ear. That sounds interesting and it sounds legit. So what I would do is um, just copy and paste the address at the top of wherever you find an article and then paste that into your discussion post and explain to me why did you pick that link? Why did you pick that article? What makes it credible? What makes it resourceful? Okay. And that's pretty much all you have to do. All right. So that's the discussion forum, your grammar assignment, and then the narration writing prep. So three assignments due. Um, as always, the discussion forum posts are due by Friday, and then the other assignments and your replies in the discussion forum are due by Sunday. So if you all have any questions, please let me know, um, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. But I'm sorry this video is coming out a little bit later than usual. They're usually out by Sunday night, but um, I'm getting this out on Monday instead, so I hope that's all right. But if you have questions, let me know, and otherwise, I am extremely excited to read what your narration topics are going to be and to eventually read those drafts in the weeks to come. All right. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great week. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you soon.